Alrighty, let's get into it. All right, folks, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It Podcast. On today's show, I am joined by Lewis Buchanan. But before we drop in on this episode, I want to say a quick thank you to some of the people who help make this podcast possible. So when it comes to cleaning and maintaining your bike and kit, there is only one brand that I trust, and that is Muck Off. Muck Off are undeniably the household name when it comes to bike cleaning, maintenance, and care products. They also just launched a brand new range of riding apparel too, which includes gloves, mountain bike shorts, and technical riding jackets. Now, it's still grim outside, especially if you're here in the UK or probably most of Europe. The trails are still wetter than an otter's pocket and there's more chance of seeing a grey air on Rob Warner's face than you have getting back from a ride with a bike that isn't covered in mud. So, how, sorry Rob. So, how about a discount code on all Muck Off products? The folks at Muck Off have been very kind to set up an exclusive discount code for listeners of this podcast. So, just head over to www.muckoff.com fill your basket and enter the code HKT15. That is all the dubs, muckoff.com, code HKT15, and that will knock 15% off almost everything on the website. And don't forget, if you want to know more about Muckoff, episode number 86 of this podcast was with Alex Trimnell, the MD, and it was a blast. Um, There's a bunch of people, guys, getting into the CBD industry for all the wrong reasons. I mean, you can buy the stuff everywhere now. It feels like from vape stores to petrol stations. I think my local sandwich shop even sells CBD too. Don't trust a guy who's selling lottery tickets one minute and then telling you the benefits of CBD the next. Or someone who's knocking up a quick bacon and egg sandwich and then wants to talk to you about the benefits of CBD. You have to be careful where you get it from and who's making the stuff. After all, you're going to be putting it inside your own body, so you've got to make sure it is the best quality you can get. That is why we recently partnered with Natural Leaf CBD. Natural Leaf CBD is a family-run business based in Cheshire in the UK that are in this market for the right reasons. Unlike petrol stations, vape shops, animal sanctuaries and sandwich shops, They know what they are talking about and, in my opinion, have the best CBD on the market. All natural leaf products are full spectrum, which means you get the full cannabinoids and not just the CBD pulled out of the crops. They are organic and vegan friendly, so you aren't going to be ingesting any pesticides or fertilizers. They use a CO2 extraction system to ensure you get a clean product with a guaranteed strength. So what is on the bottle is actually what is going inside your body. Sustainability is also a big part of the business, so all of their bottles, tins and packaging is 100% recyclable. If you want to help support the podcast and help support a legit company, then give Natural Leaf CBD a try. Just head to the website, it's all the W's, naturalleafcbd.co.uk. And if you enter the promo code HKTPOD10, 10% off everything on the store. All the links and the discount code are down in the show notes. And last but not least, our long-standing show sponsors, Saks Underwear. Saks have been with the podcast for a little over three years now. They were the first ever podcast partner. And since then, it is the only pair of underwear I have worn. Not one pair. I've got multiple. Anyway, um, They just launched their brand new Spring 20 colors and models, which includes the new Hyperdrive. Yes, Hyperdrive is a series on Netflix featuring a whole host of actors nobody's ever heard of, but it is also the name of their new compression fit model. Hyperdrive features the all new ballpark pouch and is the perfect balance of both fit and function. The Hyperdrive is also moisture wicking, odor resistant, and has a hidden waistband stash pocket so you can stash your house keys, phone or performance enhancing drugs. Saks underwear starts at just £20 and are available from all good outdoor, bike, skate, snow and fashion retailers or head to saksunderwear.com. All right, on today's podcast, I am joined by none other than friend of the show, Lewis Buchanan. Lewis just signed with Forbidden Bike Company and what's gone into this might surprise you. It's, uh, It's not easy out there, guys, being a professional mountain biker and I think this conversation is 
really open, it's really honest, and Lewis goes through what it's like to basically be sort of left with nothing after the end of a race season and have to build a program from scratch. So super interesting episode. I want to say a big thank you to Lewis for being open and talking so uh, so yeah, so openly really about what's been going on in his life and getting this thing set up. And uh, again, massive thanks to you guys out there. If you do enjoy this conversation between me and Lewis, then please like, share, follow, tag, whatever you can do to help promote the podcast. This thing is entirely built on word of mouth. There's barely any advertising goes on. Um, So yeah, please, if you are enjoying the episodes, share it with your friends. It goes a hell of a long way and reach out. Let us know what you think. Hit Lewis up, hit me up. I'd love to hear from you if you've got any questions, concerns, ideas, you know, maybe you've got some guests you think that might want featured. Reach out. I would genuinely love to hear from everybody. Um, All right, let's hand over to Odub, some Zeb, and we'll get into this episode. Welcome to the Hook It podcast, endorsed by at odub underscore 23. Uh, Add me, tag me. Follow... Been a long time. Let's say uh, I'm just gonna hit record right now if that's cool with you. Just keep it super yeah. organic. Just go from there, can't we? Um, but yeah, dude, it has. It's been a long time, man. It's been a hell of a long time. I was thinking back today, like you were one of the probably in like the first ten guests, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, pretty one of the earlier kind of ones, I guess. Yeah. On, so. Yeah. Time flies though, as well, mate. Totally. Yeah, a lot has happened between then and now for both of us I yeah think. i think so i think so for sure it's been a bit of a whirlwind this whole podcast journey i say it a lot mate but yeah it's been it's been wild honestly and like i can't believe we're here dude we're almost at 100 episodes i think this will be 96 i think or 97 right. cool, cool. yeah that's a fair chunk it is plus then you you know you factor in all of the other shit as well like the I've done some crank work stuff i've done behind the bike episodes shop talk so yeah well way over 100 episodes but of the actual like sitting down and talking to people with just shy of 100 so yeah i don't know what's gonna happen at 100 though mate i think some sort of fanfare might retire to be honest might just exactly. might just sack this whole you thing should, off <laughs> you should try and uh, get together like some sort of i don't know like get uh put out something to see see what the people like maybe get like two guests or three guests or something yeah I don't know, something like mega or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm keen for that. I'm keen for that. Maybe like try and book out an arena or something. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever thought of doing like a live thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have actually. Yeah, I'm working on one right now. Um, so cool. I did a podcast not long ago at a skate park called Asylum. Uh, cool. They've got just like the sickest setup really where you could have like a podcast then like the background sort of looks out over the skate park. So playing with the idea of doing something there with a couple of like pro BMXers, doing like a live, you know, it'd be free to come, but then you can just like sit and do like a Q&A. So yeah. just throwing all that stuff together at the minute, actually trying to um, make it, yeah, look right on paper before we start booking things and trying to get guests and stuff. So, yeah. mm. Sick. But the live thing could be good, man. I think that's almost the next, one of the next stages is like doing more live events and getting people... Mm. Yeah, just to come and hang out, like go for a ride and all that sort of stuff. Like we were saying with the skate park, people can just bring a bike and almost do like a, a an evening where you bring a bike, watch the podcast, go riding yeah. all together, you know. So cool. yeah. So how are you though, man? Like what's uh I'm good. Yeah. Uh, uh yeah. Big just changes. Been mad mad busy. Yeah. It's like, the busiest uh off season I've ever had. Is so, it really? Uh yeah, it's been uh not yeah, I'm not complaining, but it's just been crazy. Mm. Uh, yeah, so much has happened, uh, like unplanned and everything. But yep. just kind of go with it now. So okay, all right. Um, yeah, um, okay. Yeah. We're gonna obviously we're gonna get into it a little bit. So a few teasers there before we start talking. <laughs> 
So yeah. for people listening though, obviously Lewis, like we said before, you've been on the podcast a few times. You're one of the first guests. And then one of the, do you remember the episode we did where we had you and Rich at the same time? That was, yeah, that was super fun actually. So if anyone yeah, wants yeah. to listen to that, um, we basically did a, like a, I don't really know how you'd put it. It's almost like an open discussion about like Rich, who was our EWS or bus rider, privateer, like his sort of season and what went on with him. And then we did it from your perspective. That's probably a better word, a perspective, you know, from a privateer to a a full-blown like factory rider. So I'd advise people, if you want to learn more about Lewis, your story, like go back, listen to the first one, listen to that one and probably get a bit more of an understanding. But I think today we're going to sort of go through some of the more recent years since we last spoke a couple of years yeah yeah uh but it's good it's one of them in it though dude like you know with social media and shit like i'm still fully aware of what you've been doing i'm still tracking you we still you know chat every now and again through instagram or whatever yeah so it's not like we've not you know i'm like oh where have you been (laughs) i'm fully aware what's been going on and i think most people out there will be too so yeah yeah Mm. so tell me about the last (laughs) couple of years then man like what you know the whole um how long were you on ibis uh, so after her, my contract ended with Trek, I signed with Ibis for two years. Two years. Okay. Which uh, was cool, like some sort of like security there. And then, um, yeah, the, the bike I'd never rode or rode before. So it was all, everything was kind of new. But mm. uh, yeah, um, had a good, a good first year with them, like pretty solid. And then uh, last year was just everything was like lining up and then I uh, flew to New Zealand ended up in hospital with the flu oh yeah yeah uh, like like I think I was well, I didn't touch my bike like for I think two weeks I, like I was out there and I never touched my bike at all I stayed in bed really was early was, early uh, coronavirus adapter you used to, you were on uh, it you were on it years ago dude, like <laughs> It was the nastiest thing I've ever... Like, I can't emphasize that. Like, I've had the cold before, but yeah. now that I've had the flu and, like, I've, I was in hospital and I was, like, vomiting blood and, like, it was ridiculous. Uh, so it wasn't a great start to last year. Yeah. Um, so remind me then, you flew out there and, like, did you... You yeah. didn't race that event or... No, you just no, got I there raced. and got sick. Did you did I race. Did race. Yeah, you that fl- was my decision. It was probably... I'm just very lucky that it was that it never got worse mm. like it could have honestly could have killed me like the flu kills people and i think yeah. if you get the wrong side of it or i don't know you have like a another health issue or something you know it could yeah, yeah. come I mean, off worse like again that's pretty much what's going on right now isn't it with this virus that like people that have got like an underlying problem or a little bit older don't have a strong immune system you know it's killing people unfortunately yeah. and it's big yeah. it's a bit of a joke this whole coronavirus thing <laughs> but it sort of isn't at the same time like, i have actually had my yeah. first meetings cancelled this week because of coronavirus which i was like i didn't know it'd get to that but it's a really yeah. big it's really funny actually it's a really big retailer they're a mount uh, they're a motorcycle store okay. got like 30 shops around the uk and the guy who i was meeting called me yesterday he's like look really sorry i'm gonna have to cancel like you, v- you visit because coronavirus and i was like okay what you're shutting all the yeah. shops as well like well, what's going on you're not letting people in he's like no 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 it's just just sales reps we're not letting you in i'm like what <laughs> apparently we travel too much so we're not allowed to go into the building <laughs> so i was like dude i'm only from sheffield it's like an hour and a half away it's not <laughs> yeah yeah it's starting to like things are starting to i mean i've not really paid much attention no you probably to the news honestly but I think it's been like crazily blown out of proportion, but then, like you said, it is serious in some matters because, you know, some yeah. people, a lot of people are affected by it, right? Yeah, but, it definitely, and it's starting to have an effect, obviously, on the economy, and yeah. they're on about, you know, cancelling the Olympics. I mean, that'd be huge if they cancelled the Olympics, yeah. and I don't know if there's talk of like, you know, I mean, everything, anything that involves sort of like travelling to a country, so like the first round of the World Cup, like who knows? at the minute because yeah. so many people travel from all over to that one location yeah it wouldn't yeah. surprise me dude if they cancelled the first yeah. round of the world cup at all like i yeah. would not be surprised which is yeah. crazy i mean the formula one i think are they not on about like cancelling the first round of the f1 it's fine yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it's getting wild yeah. so yeah, sure. yeah. You, you've got the best idea mate just self-isolation in scotland just chill <laughs> yeah dude nah. <laughs> 
<laughs> if anyone's going to avoid it, it's going to be you up there, right? <laughs> I know, in the middle of nowhere. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so tell me then, um, news, what was it like riding with Flu, man? Like, what the hell? Um, it was, yeah, like, just, I didn't have any expectations of a result. I just was kind of stubborn and, uh, you know, I did get better towards race day, but more from the point of, like, I went from not being able to walk to then I was able to cycle a bike. So I was like, oh, well, if I can cycle a bike, I'll at least try and score some points or something. And I just remember, like, each stage I was doing in the race, it it didn't even take 20 seconds into the, into the stage, yeah. and I was absolutely done. Right? Really? Like, I uh, just had no, nothing in my body because yeah. I was vomiting and everything, like, so much throughout the week and uh, sweating so much. And I, I, I'm just, I lost so much weight, I swear. Like, I just, yeah, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, wow. I think, I, I don't know, I think I finished, like, 47th or something like that or in the maybe 57th or something. But Jeez, that's still pretty damn impressive, to be fair. Yeah, it was... So yeah, and then the week after we went to Tasmania, mm. um, and I did get better for that. And then, um, yeah, I was inside the top twenty on that one. Um, mm. And then yeah, shortly after that, I broke my wrist at yes. home, which is just how did that happen? Just, oh, just um, just like a normal kind of training ride, right? And mm. I was out with a couple of friends, and I got a little bit offline. And I was the speed I was going was too fast for me to like slow down. I was heading towards a tree. Okay, right. And I basically tried to like I put my hands up to protect my face, and my wrist got crushed against the tree and my chest. Oh fuck! Right. So it basically just snapped my wrist, like pretty much like in half at the joint, really. Jeez. Uh, and I never kind of I never done anything like that to my wrist so when i looked at it uh once i got up and it was squint and like had this big bump in it i just like you had pretty much broken it right yeah so, yeah um, yeah and then that was just a kind of um take it as it was and i didn't have to get a surgery on it like it was just kind of like something that would heal mm. um what's it like though like being a you know a You've already had like for that you know that year you've gone out to New Zealand, got ill. Do, do you feel like you almost like have to ride because there's so many people have like invested money in you as well? And then when you get yeah. hurt, is it a bit like fuck? Like I can't even imagine that phone call. Like, I've I've never had to do that right of making that phone call to the team manager and been like, look. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty tough. Um, it's like the illness thing is like fine. Like that's like just unfortunate. Like. Mm. I caught the flu like we come across that many different people while you're flying across there right so yeah, yeah. Um, but with the injury thing it's again like it's part of the sport and it happens you have to accept that but it is it was difficult to kind of especially that that like last year being my contract year like I was up yeah um, it was a little bit difficult how do you do uh, it how just, do you tell them <laughs> what is it a phone call or what Text. <laughs> Honestly, I think that was a text. Who is it? <laughs> but, yeah, it was just a WhatsApp. I was just like, "Look, crashed, broke my wrist, but I'll be back soon, and I'll." Yeah. I think I just like I'm usually pretty confident, uh, and it's not through being like arrogant or cocky, but I'm always super positive. Like if I face a bit of adversity, I'm like, "Look, I'll come back." and I'll be where I left off, like, basically. Mm, mm, mm. So I pretty much just said that. I was like, it's just a bump in the road. And luckily it was, like, I only missed uh, two rounds. Right, um, okay. So, and they were kind of, they were cool with it. They were, like, as a team should be, I think, like, supportive of any rider, right? Yeah, um, like you said, it's one of those things, isn't it? You know, you're racing bikes in between trees yeah, super yeah. fast, like, shit, it's, it's going to happen, isn't it? It's just totally, one of those yeah. things, you know? Not many people have got have unscathed years where it's you know perfect, I guess. But yeah, just can't imagine that 
that happening and just being like, fuck, like so many people. Like, I, I, I don't think I deal with that pressure too good. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Like I said, I've never really been there. I guess the only only real pressure like that I've ever had is like your family that have invested money in certain things, like going mm-hmm. racing or whatever. And, yeah. you know, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, in some way, I guess I have had that, but I can't, yeah, I can't imagine having to make that call to someone who's a manager being like, look, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I actually find it harder to tell my parents more than, uh, than the team to be or than the brands you right know? right just because they know how much work i really put in mm. so for me to like have something like that it's like and i think they've been around it enough where they see the amount of injuries that i've had they've not necessarily been like life-changing but i mean i'd say my elbow has been right okay so for them to be around that all the time almost yeah, they just hate getting that phone call, and I'm like, look, don't worry, but I broke my wrist, and they're like, swearing on the end of the phone, and like, uh-huh. it's just, it's just frustration, right? Yeah, for sure. So for me to tell the team, like, I don't, it didn't bother me, like. Uh, mm. How like yeah. how have your parents always been with that? Because you, I was thinking about it today, dude. You've been on the scene for a long time. Like, you've been what technically a professional rider since sixteen or something? Would you yeah. say? Yeah. Like, yeah. and yeah. what are you now? 26. 26 so 10 years like it feels like you're one of those guys that i don't know you've been around a lot like, i don't know how do you put it without sounding really rude yeah. <laughs> you've been around for a long time but you're still yeah. super young like yeah. you know and i think it's it's hard sometimes for people maybe to um to think what that can be like you know doing something professionally for 10 years but yeah. what are your parents like with it are they have, have they always ever been like you know not get a real job but is there ever been any of that stuff um there was uh like end of last year and then this year right uh, um when all that kind of shit went on but mm. um as far as before that they've always just been kind of like supportive and whatever like and now that i live like i've moved out now and i live by myself which is a big life change for me like yeah. um so they're not as involved as they used to be say when i was um uh, like a young kid or mm. a junior or whatever but they're always kind of like if i believe that i'm still relevant like and i can do it like yeah. then do it right so yeah yeah um, yeah i would only really say the end of last year um and yeah the end of last year is really when they were kind of like had a little bit more to say uh-huh. uh, about my situation right and that, are they like fully aware of what's going on with that? Like, did do they help you with contracts and anything like that? Um, my dad did mm. a little bit, um, because I've never dealt with anything like that. Yeah. Uh, when you're signing for a team, you just deal with one contract, right? So, but I have like I don't know twelve more. I don't know <laughs> something like that. Right. Like it's mad. So I'll just go to him and like, you know, just ask for a bit of advice. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do your parents do, like, out of interest? My dad is, like, a basically, like, overseas management stuff for an engineering company. Okay. Um, like, they build whatever. They make stuff for, like, the U.S. Army or something like that. Mm. Uh, pretty nuts stuff. And then my mom, she doesn't work. She has FND, which is Functional Neurological Disorder. Okay. Uh, so she's basically, like, she's had that for quite a while now, but her life's pretty much been put on hold. Okay because of that right so it's like flipped her life upside down she can't she can't really go out and walk like she mm. used to she can you know so yeah oh wow uh, okay i didn't know that i've yeah. never I, to be honest i've never heard of that either yeah so. it's a, like a something to do with the brain like um it's the nerve like all the nerves and everything it, it's just basically sending wrong signals to her body right so sometimes she can walk fine but then the next day she just can't walk wow. like it's it's and when it's, when it's something to do with the brain, right, for them to, like, come up with a solution or, like, something to help it is, mm. like, I don't want to say almost impossible, but, like, it's almost seen that way with her. Like, she's had tests and everything and seen doctors and, Just, yeah, there's right, nothing you wow. can really, really wow. do right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. So yeah, they've been they've been super wicked. So good, that's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. So, so it's probably sounds like it's fair to say, dude, that like last year was testing. It was a roller coaster year. 
Yeah, um, it was, like I said, the, the illness was fine. The rest was fine. Yeah. When I came back, it was fine. Um, like, I came back to France, uh, which was my first race back. I was still in a wrist brace. Mm -hmm. So I used that race purely just for like, you know, I could ride a bike, I'll go and I'll get some racing experience. Um, and what I finished, I think I finished uh, maybe like 30, 30 something or something like that. Okay. Off the top of my head. Um, and I, I was cool with that. I was like, man, like that's fine. Yeah. Um, and then I had a little bit of a gap to Whistler and I pretty much pinpointed Whistler as being like where I would come back and I would be 100%. Like mm -hmm. I wouldn't be in a, in a wrist brace. I wouldn't rely on any of that. And I, I turned up to there and I didn't have a wrist brace. My wrist was fine. Um, it might not seem amazing, but I mean, I finished 18th and I got, I think I got three sixth place finishes on three of the stages, okay. which is like, Dude, I was like, that's legit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I was kind of like, not in like a, you know, by any means I didn't blow and get a podium, but I was like, I just finished sixth on three stages out of whatever six that there were. Yeah. And I was within touch of the top guys. So I was kind of like, my speed's there. And so I was quite happy with that. Okay. Um, that's cool. And then, yeah, that's when everything just kind of like, started snowballing in what uh, way what do you mean it started snowballing? Uh, just like that's like a crucial time of the year where you yeah. like august yes kind of like yeah where you start talking i think as well it, it gets pushed back more and more every year do you know what i mean it feels like, it that. Seems like that especially because yeah. sometimes i'm on the opposite side of that you know looking yeah. when people start sending cvs and resumes into you asking for sponsorship and you like yeah, yeah. Fuck, it's august like geez mm -hmm. and then it, it yeah. yeah people are doing that stuff early and i think that's yeah, it's important to remember that as well, especially with people who maybe don't work in the bike industry, that all those deals are done, you know, way before you see them, months and months yeah. and months before. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I learned a lot from that, like, that I'm applying to this year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was, and then basically that was almost the end of the season, really, after Whistler. Like, we only had the final round after that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'd kind of missed missed out on a fair bit of the year like whatever two rounds or something but it was uh i still consider it like pretty damn good to come back from from the break i had while all the other dudes were racing yeah. and to do that at whistler i was i was again I was like stacked there. local field as well like, obviously there's stacked yeah. local field everywhere in the world now but like yeah, yeah to yeah. go to whistler where everyone goes to you yeah know. yeah um so um yeah, it was good. I, honestly, I, I had a good year last year. I enjoyed it a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, just didn't like translate into this year. How I, like everything I swear from Whistler on was just like I can't really remember that much from it. It was just like quite a lot of mush and just like okay, so much going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so many different thoughts. Like, yeah. I'm I'm kind of curious to know then. So how does that? How does it work on the reverse? So you, let's say you said to your team manager, look, I broke my wrist. How do they then say to you, look, contract year, it's probably not yeah. going to happen next year. And like, do you know why that all came to fruition and stuff? Um, honestly, like I've, I've, yeah, they never said anything about, like they just kind of were like, look, just do your thing, come back. So did that. But by the time, you know, I'm not going to like watch what I'm going to say here. I'm going to like mm. make sure it's known, um, like by the time Whistler came around, that was time I was aware that the team wanted to have talks about extending for for the future. Yeah. So I was down <laughs> for that. I was pretty happy. Uh, like I liked everyone on the team. I still do like everyone on the team. So yeah, basically Whistler was like the time to, to have a chat. Um, I think the I said Zermatt, the final round was just after Whistler, but it was North Star, the American round. Okay. So the following weekend was North Star, and yeah, that was actually a complete mess of a race as well. Like, I just forgot about that. Uh, I ended up, I ended up, uh, so I'm a big fan of carbon wheels. Like, I like the feel of them. Um, uh -huh. 
and I've never really had any like wheels break on me before, right? So um, I did the first stage, like racing, um, and I had like a, a tire insert and everything in. Right. Uh, and I basically like five seconds before the finish, I like pumped the downslope, and I just heard my wheel like ding. But as I kept, continued, like finished the fi- went to the finish line, continued cycling, I started like my tire was going low. Okay. And I looked down, and my wheel was like, like basically like in half, like overlapped pretty much. No shit. So I'd completely snapped my wheel in half. Yeah. Um, and I had maybe 20, 25 minutes to get to the top for stage two. So I went back to the pits and basically said, just fix it basically yeah. without, I didn't, I didn't want to take the penalty either. I thought that it would be strangely, I thought it would be salvageable. Okay. So they like took the tire off, put an inner tube in, cable tied the tire to the wheel. Um, Cause you can't change quick. wheels. No. You can, but you take a five, I think it's a three minute penalty now. Ah, okay, right. But I was like, I swear we can, like, I just stubborn me. I was like, we can salvage this. Mm. Um, and at that point as well, I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, this is my, like, I'm riding good. And this is my final, like, it's, my contract's up. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not taking a penalty. Like, I'm not taking a hit on the result. Going like, out gonna, on the sword. <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, yeah, they like, put glue like adhesive on the crack and it on the brake and everything mm. um and so they fixed it and i think they pumped my tire up to like 50 psi or something so i got the chairlift up but as i was getting to the top you can see the start yeah of the stage and i'm on this chairlift and the dude who is in front of me is leaving the start and i have 30 seconds to get there I'm still on this chairlift and I'm like stressing out Callahan and all that or like screaming like you can do it hurry up make it and there's a video on my Instagram that Callahan sent me because he had his GoPro on right and he was the guy behind me and I literally jumped off the chairlift ran like ran to get my bike sprinted to the start and I just said can I go and the dude went two one and I just went right so I made the start with pretty much two seconds to go (laughs) (laughs) my tires at god knows what pressure i have this massive crack in my rim yeah and i'm about to ride this stage that is like a rock garden the whole way it was just like (laughs) such a weird experience like um out of breath like and everything before i even started so yeah that was just like a that race was just a big mess basically right right i finished that stage and did you get to the bottom yeah i got to the bottom my wheel was like wobbling like mad um i think i finished like in the again like in the 30s or something like (laughs) so it's like uh, but that night the team couldn't fix it basically like Mm. they just couldn't so they were super apologetic and i was like look fine like is what it is Mm. so I got my three minute penalty and I was basically pushed all the way down to the bottom of the page, like last place. Um, so how does that so work? They that, they put the new wheel on? Put the new wheel on. Yeah, and then but then what as, do you do? You have to tell the organizers like... Yeah, right. as you start the second day of racing, right. you you basically, the, the UCI guy is like uh, aware of the, the change that you've made basically. Okay, all right. Um, and then, yeah, I was, I, I want to say I was motivated to like put in good stage times on the second day, but then in a way I was like, I was really that fed up of, uh, the issues that I had with the wheel because mm. it wasn't the first. Oh, um, really? Right. And I'm not, uh, talking shit on. No, 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 not at all. Brand, Just tell the truth. But, I, but I'm not going to like not tell the truth. So yeah. earlier on in the year, I had the same thing happen, like, and it. I didn't get to practice at all so it's right. just like something that i was totally kind of over and i was just um yeah, yeah not just not really happy with it to be honest so okay. um okay. and a lot of people could say that that's on me because i had the choice to run alloy too but i've never really had the, the chance to test the alloy properly so um yeah and it's like that half it's like that 
you know, I've raced on the carbon wheels and I've had, I made like really good success on them. So when you have good success, you're just like, sure, I'll just keep running them. Keep going. It just takes, it just takes that one, like, or two kind of freak accident mm. to happen. So yeah, I wasn't happy and, uh, I made sure that I stressed that to the team. Um, and yeah, basically around about that time I was kind of like talking obviously to the team about extending and we'd basically like chatted a little bit about uh whatever like the amount uh like salary or like Hmm. just trying to up things a little bit little tweaks and changes and um but it got to the point where it was kind of like not stressing me out but I was like look let me focus on the remaining races and uh once the season's kind of like coming to an end we can um we can let like catch up where we left off and we'll get this signed off yeah i guess that's the thing too is like you've still got races to do so if you've got that niggly thing in your head like oh i might i might not even have a ride at the end of the year that that totally changes everything right like yeah yeah. totally fuck your whole mindset up they were kind of uh, they were like so we'd actually how it happened is we had basically come to an agreement um they were they were happy i was happy and i think one of my last emails was like i'll call when i'm home i'll send you an email and we'll finish this off mm. and it was kind of like cool i appreciate that focus on your race and and then that was it so when i came home from america and sent that email. I got an email like the day, like either the day after or a couple of days after. And it basically just said, um, like really sorry to tell you, but we've just changed our mind. Uh, we're going somewhere else or like going with a different vision or right. something like that. Um, and I was just, honestly, I didn't, uh, I was really, uh, pissed off at that because we had basically talked about numbers with all this sort of stuff like it was all like pretty much there yeah but then just for them to go oh I've just changed our mind and so in my like in my head I was like right cool so I think we're we're on the same kind of page <laughs> and I'm gonna have a ride with these guys right because they never said... Oh, right, yeah. you left like thinking this will just get sorted and we'll just carry yeah, on, yeah. Yeah, because there was no sort of like, oh, we're looking at other people, so you should keep your options open too, or we're unsure if we're going to re-sign you. It was okay. like, you know, let's look at signing you for another two years. And I was like, when you get told that and it's in email, you're kind of like, cool. Mm. Um, and I'm, I was happy, right, where I was at. So, um, And then when I got told that, basically, I was... Um, I just kind of expressed my opinion and how I felt to them in reply to that. And, um, yeah, then that's when everything kind of was like, honestly, I was like, like, fuck, what do I do now? Like I was in that position. And by that time it is. Yeah. I was going to say when all time scale. It's way too late. Like I remember pretty much that day I was either texting team managers or emailing them being like do you have any space in a team like mm. don't mean to sound desperate but like this is a situation I've been put in um, and everyone came back being like oh you should have got in touch with us like <laughs> yeah. a month ago yeah, like, exactly we would, we would have loved to have you on the team and I'm like and I think the other thing as well is when I was having these positive conversations with the team. They were like, and other people ask you, oh, so what are you doing next year? And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm staying with Ibis for the next couple of years. Yeah, you mean other team managers are probably asking you anyway, but you're you're set, yeah. The word gets around. So, um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer that that happened, or it happened that way, and it's business, and I don't mind that they signed another rider, right? Mm. But it's the fact how it went about, and... I just wasn't happy with it. Mm. Um, absolutely not better that uh, that I didn't 
get signed for another two years. It's just the fact of, I think it could have just been done more professionally on their behalf. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because, like you said, it, yeah. it is business as well. Like that's the yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a strange thing about all this. You know, uh-huh. you know, you've got a wage to make. You've got a, you know, you've got a house. You've got a mortgage to pay or whatever you've got. It's not all sunshine and rainbows of just riding bikes out in different parts of the world, is it? You know, you've got totally. to be you've got to be making money. You've got to be yeah. doing your job. You know. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, yeah, that was a, that was kind of how that went. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think I feel like we left on like pretty good terms, like in person, just, maybe not via email. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I wouldn't even say in person. Um, All right. I just, yeah, I just have a bit of a chip on my shoulder, really, mm. uh, which I think can pay off in a good way. I was going to say that can be like huge motivation, can't it? Like you see, you know, adversity yeah. and it's yeah. just how you deal with it, man, isn't it? You know, you yeah. you could have gone one way and thrown the towel in or you could have gone yeah. the other way and made made shit happen. So was there a was there a thought there of like fuck, maybe this is this is it? Um yeah, there was. Yeah. There was just the from the from the point of like I knew I was late. It was it was it was fairly late in the year and if I wanted to race like I was kind of like I'm not just gonna do it half ass like I feel like mm. I really wanted to do it properly like if I was gonna do it then I would have to do it properly so that's like have a mechanic like come to me come with me to the races have plenty of spares earn a salary have a budget that covers all the costs for racing yeah. like I didn't want to have to dig into my own pocket and kind of be struggling really yeah well the thing is dude like you know you are a you're the one of the fastest guys in the world like you shouldn't have to struggle really do you know what i mean yeah you've you've got these you know these things have happened with your unfortunate circumstances but um, you know you should not be struggling like you are that's arguably the fastest guy in scotland let's be honest you know which is full of talent you've proven just, proven yourself on the world you know the ebu s scene you've been around the industry for a long time it's like you shouldn't yeah. be struggling like there should be rides out there yeah i think it's there's very very there aren't many like teams out there right that yeah there's not a lot um but now like now that i'm in the situation i'm in there's absolutely no reason why i wouldn't do it again next year okay if you know, things keep going good. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a point where I was kind of like, that's an awful lot of work. <laughs> and I don't think I can do it. Like, they're just, because I've never done anything. Like, like what I'm doing right now, I've never done before. Right. So, so right um, from being like, the first time you got a, a deal, like a pro deal, you've always yeah. had it, like like you said, one contract. This is where I ride. This is all the stuff that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is what you get. It's, it's super easy. Like, it really is easy. Yeah. Like, you sign a contract, you wait for a shit to show up at your door, and a lot of it, and you get your stuff taken care of and your flights and everything, and that's just it. So, <laughs> the hardest part is the training and being prepared, right? Yeah. Well, which is what you should be focusing on. Totally. Yeah. So for me to be like, I don't have any. I've never, I've never booked a flight in my life. Like I never had <laughs> booked. Swear. <laughs> maybe once like when I was like <laughs> that's classic I so I was like never yeah I've never booked like fly my life I'd never I don't think I've really ever invoiced anyone for anything <laughs> either like maybe for some like expenses but like other than that it's yeah there was so much and it wasn't just like uh it was yeah it's the thing like usually you get a bike and everything's there mm. I was like, I have to get a frame and then everything else. And then I have to make sure, like, you know, which brand is, like, if, if there's a brand that does a lot of components, yeah. that they're, like, going to be paying, like, a substantial amount more than someone that just, say, does, I don't know, like... Bike cleaner or whatever. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it was weighing up all that, and then it was, like, also going through, like... Um, how much like do I need like how much is it going to cost mm. I don't know had to figure that out still don't think I've really got it right but 
I'm in the situation I'm in. So, um, and then a salary and yeah, it was like super busy, yeah. like really, really busy off season. Like I think I had a, usually I have a one month break after the season. Okay. I'm pretty sure I had, I don't know, maybe two and a half months off. I just didn't train. Like I was just. Oh really? What after like August time? August September yeah. time. Really? Well after yeah after kind of like September like yeah I just had like a good couple months off. Okay. Um, because I was like, you know, training can take the, you know, I don't need to train right now. Mm. Focus on trying to get some sort of program going. Cool. Um, but yeah, I guess once I was kind of decided on that plan, I was like, I'm gonna do it proper or try. Yeah. It was then just like rallying to try and find people that would want to be a part of it. So I had to come up with like a proposal yep. off my plan and uh, this is what it's going to look like, but kind of need your help. But I think it's like a unique opportunity, like to be a part of a program, right? Because it, it, now it is kind of a program, like everything is done under my Got you. terms. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm in charge of whatever now basically yeah. even though i have all these brands helping me and and uh the bike brand which are a big part of it mm. but um yeah it's just cool to kind of have a bit of self-control and a bit of um deciding over what goes on so, yeah um, yeah so who did you like does anyone help you put that stuff together because i know i not that long ago also had to build a proposal for something and i i'm i get all the ideas are in my head but yeah. putting those onto something which is like mm -hmm. easy to read and like gets the message across. It's fucking hard, man. That is a skill. So you, yeah, did you have yeah. anyone, you know, muck in and help you or? Um, I honestly did pretty much did it myself. I, yeah, I mean, my dad like helped me, but it was coming from my, coming from me and I knew what I, what I kind of wanted or what I was sort of after or the vision that I had in mind. Mm. So it was kind of like best if I just sort of, naturally like did it okay. myself yeah 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 yeah. i didn't want to like come across as being like some sort of like massive professional like team owner like i was just i'm just a dude that wants to try and put together a program obviously for myself but then for other brands to be like hey that's cool like he's building his own kind of program around himself yeah and everyone gets a piece of the pie, like everyone gets a good bit of exposure. And that's the kind of thing I was going for. And, you know, when I was looking at brands to try and that, that I was interested in, they were all brands I'm like, hmm, could I see myself like kind of, you know, getting along with them, like not just getting along with the product, but like. Yeah, the, the people and yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I'm, I'm a gelling with them, like whether it's through the phone or through email, like. Mm. Um, that's a super important part of the puzzle too isn't it is that everyone's yeah. like on the same page and everyone's you know yeah. after the same stuff again yeah. it's you know slightly different but I know when I was looking at bringing on sponsors to this like to the podcast it's like right yeah you could have fucking whatever company pretty much selling mattresses and all this shit but it's yeah. like is that what this is about like is that the vibe we want no it's not and it's like about trying to find the right people that are willing to work with you you know it's, it's yeah. you scratch my back I scratch your back sort of vibe isn't it Totally, yeah, um, yeah. And so, cool. yeah, it was just, um, I, I honestly think I got in touch with every single bike brand there is out there, like, I swear, like. <laughs> what were you doing, just sliding into DMs, just like, yo! <laughs> honestly, people are like, how do, you, how do you get sponsors? And I'm like, look, sending, like, info at forbiddenbikes.com yeah. is just not going to really cut it, like. So I just Instagram direct messaged like the brands who I didn't have emails for. Right. And just gave them a brief breakdown of what was happening. And if they were interested, then here's my email. Like, let's talk more. Okay. Um, and yeah, like that's basically how everything uh, snowballed. Like basically got a sheet of paper, wrote down all the frames that I considered okay. that I'd be like if I had the opportunity to race on this this frame and how do you do that just looking at geometry as well or um or just honestly no just kind of like uh, I looked at the top sort of 20 in the EWS and I was like just pick the bikes from there okay <clears throat> I feel like I've rode enough 
bikes that I have an idea of like uh, what's good in my opinion mm. um, so I just wrote them down and then basically just fired off messages to every single one with the with the same whatever the same proposal right yeah um, and yeah I uh, just had to negotiate um, what they could do and and all that and um, yeah that's was the that's, you know it's it's public knowledge now you're riding obviously for, 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 for that's hard to say for forbidden yeah which is a, you know a sick brand you know i'm loving what those these guys are doing but was there anything else as well like on the cards that you know you don't have to mention them but was there anything else happening or um i was talking to specialize a little bit okay um and then orbea a little bit but that was kind of like i just kind of like died a little bit okay. it's just you know like uh they're obviously tied up like with their budgets and yeah that's the uh, thing as well like the time you're doing this budgets are literally done yeah, signed off yeah, like yeah, yeah, we're, yeah this is what we're doing in 2020 this yeah. is it so, so um that's the thing like i'm kind of blown away from what i've been able to get for how late it was yeah like um yeah just the thing with forbidden that just stemmed from an instagram message like i was just like look i know you guys like don't have any racer mm. on the bike at an EWS I don't know what your plans are but how cool would it be to get your bike out there racing the EWS like how like how rad would that be because they don't have anyone right so yeah. um, and then Owen got back shortly after and he uh, wasn't sure who was up for contract um, I guess he was maybe doing a bit of searching mm. and I just got in touch with him at kind of the right time and we both had the similar same sort of vision like to do some to, to race the EWS and um, yeah and, and then it just kind of grew from there um, crazy then, yeah yeah, yeah it, was, uh, <laughs> it, it honestly, just falls like, into place like if someone said last year oh could you see yourself racing on for for forbidden i'd probably be like nah. but that's just like yeah. i never really knew of the the brand until like shortly before i i got in touch with them right right um and what's cool is it's such a small company like uh ollie the marketing manager ollie forster yeah. ex sender yeah. magazine people absolute yeah. hero yeah. uh ollie's a friend of mine i had him on the phone this morning for quite a, we had Ended up, let's have a quick catch up. But as you know, with Ollie, you know, it ended up being an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, just <laughs> chatting about the brand and like, all, you know, how he got into it and stuff. But it's, it's super cool. You're almost like, um, you're, you're like the fifth member of that team. You are like, there's only four people behind that whole company. Yeah. You're yeah, the fifth. Yeah. I mean, fuck, yeah. that's crazy. You know, yeah. you look at what some of the other guys are working with. So, um, cool. and you know, the, the bikes look amazing. So what, what was it like? In fact, I watched you vlog today if people haven't seen yeah. it the when yeah. you first went and rode one so you went and picked mm -hmm. one up was it it's from bike tracks i think in ambleside mm -hmm. so yeah okay so just walk me through it a little bit because it's super interesting yeah. so you've, you've got the yeah. conversation going you've never seen the bike you've never ridden no. the bike no. what happens next like how do you go about getting it because i think you said uh, actually in your vlog oh i'm about to sign with them but i just want to ride one <laughs> you're like mm -hmm. what yeah 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 they were we'd already kind of talked about uh, what I was after and what they were after but for them a big part was like look like whether or not like you think you'll love you'll whether or not you think you'll love the bike or not please just ride one hmm. because if you end up not liking it then what's the point yeah so I was kind of like totally like sure that makes sense so Ollie Ollie and Owen uh, sorted out like the opportunity for me to go and pick one up and Sarah, it was her own bike, so like oh, wow. massive shout out to her, like for allowing me to <laughs> to ride that bike. Um, so yeah, we went to pick it up, and at that point, I was kind of like, you know what, like this whole, as well as like wanting to do my own program, I'm like, I'm gonna just make a push at the YouTube thing, like I'm just gonna flip and film it, mm. like I'm just gonna do it naturally, like. So, yeah, we ended up kind of. We ended up going and picking it up, and at the time, 
we discussed about bike size like was I medium was I large I don't know like I've never rode a bike I've never rode a bike never rode a forbidden and I've never rode a bike with a geometry or with a chain line or anything like high pivot like that and right it, right so much was new um and then yeah I ended up test riding it um at home and it was big eye opener it was actually a little bit of a struggle even though in the video I said that it felt good mm. and that I liked it I did like it but it was just a bit of a it wasn't as easy as of a learning curve as what I kind of thought it was going to be okay yeah um, super unique would, bike though like if, yeah. if you've never been anything like that as well before and totally. I think in general just jumping on someone else's bike someone else's set up yeah you know yeah there was so much kind of not that it was wrong about the setup but there was just not for me right yeah. like it's for it's another person's bike so um, <clears throat> I, w I wasn't wanting to go and like change this change the forks on it like <laughs> the, the front end was the front end was too low like because the steer was obviously cut really short okay and then it ended up being that the medium was the wrong size for me like it was too cramped um and then yeah i was just on it was just everything was different so. yeah 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 but i just kind of take from that i was like look if i can ride the bike with that much being off on it huh. and i still feel pretty good then i'm confident that if i was on a bigger size with all my own parts on it then we're then we're sound yeah um so yeah i only had probably i only rode it pretty much once or twice really <laughs> and then uh how come we didn't then, ride it like in ample side just curious we did. oh you did, we did actually. yeah okay we went because it like your vlog like skipped straight to adrenaline or something yeah yeah, yeah yeah and yeah, i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just ride it there <laughs> our plan was to like we're kind of like oh because well, we, we went and rode around ample side but the stuff around there it's not really trails right it's quite like walkers yeah paths. yeah yeah and yeah it was just kind of difficult to to film up there really or to get any sort of like anything that was interesting so mm. we did ride um which was cool um but yeah i just kind of wanted to to give it some proper like sort of ride in yeah um, yeah right replicate an actual ingress yeah. or something oh, yeah so yeah we and then i ended up kind of we, we, we took it back and um uh, yeah shortly after that had a couple of talks about the sizing and mm. all that sort of stuff and uh yeah basically just came to an agreement and uh yeah sign signed with forbidden so that was like um kind of weird actually how it happened because my um the the, the frame was like not one of the last things to get sorted but it was like kind of i'd already got like other sponsors sort of sorted but right. I, didn't, I didn't have a frame so um I was I was really stoked to get that kind of done yeah. and and sealed and um Do you put to together that. like a a dream list almost? Like right, this is all the shit that I know works and did you do you go after those guys or cuz I'm not, not in, really. I'm I'm not entirely sure dude what are you sponsors for next year? Like Oh, I have a lot. I really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I have I actually have like my jer my print like I have jer like draft jerseys printed out. Okay, so cool. If you ask me what my sponsors are, I'm not going to remember them off by heart. <laughs> <laughs> so I have Forbidden, I have TRP, yeah. Adre Adrenaline Uplift, E13, 1UP Components, Renthal, Muckoff, SDG, Maxis, Smith, Colin Kilshaw, which are like, uh, they're an estate agent okay. in the area, Mudhugger, Crank Brothers, um, Fox, who else am I forgetting? I think that's it. Mm. Muck off. Yeah, muck off. Um, so, and uh, Darko as well, which are the Australian brand that do the that do my race gear. Okay. Yeah, and really, ride, kit looks on point, man. It's real nice. Yeah. That's sick. And uh, uh, ride concept as well. So there's a lot, but like, it's a lot to name, but when you look at on the jersey, it's really not yeah. a, like a crazy, crazy amount, but it certainly took a lot of work. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty, like I said, for how late it was, uh, I wouldn't even say, like, I, I, I wasn't even in the position to, like, be like, right, I want 
box suspension I want, Maxxis tires, which are my favorite. Like I really enjoy riding that stuff. Mm. I wasn't even at, in that sort of position. Like I was going to every suspension company almost. Like yeah, like Olin's and like all the all that sort of stuff. Um, because at that time, it was just like whoever if if your product's good. Like in my eyes, then and if you can help me, then just I'm more than happy to have the, that brand on board. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Didn't, didn't didn't feel like I could. I was in a position to kind of pick and choose. Yeah. Um, but I'm just like stoked with the people that I've got on board, or just happen to be like some of the biggest brands, right? Yeah. So, definitely. Definitely. Me and Ollie were having this sort of back and forth too about like what makes a privateer. Mm. So I mean, on paper you're a privateer because you're not on the big teams I think yeah, I yeah, guess that's yeah, right yeah. so do you see yourself as a privateer like coming in as a bit of an underdog bit of a chip on your shoulder something to prove or yeah I would say so yeah. I have that dis- discussion a little bit actually with, with with some people like people like oh he's a privateer but then no he's not because he earns money yeah I was going to say it's, yeah you're sort of like but technically you are but you're yeah, not yeah like I'm <laughs> I don't like I'm doing everything myself like everything myself to like it doesn't even to design in the jerseys like the logos getting the whole logos like um like no one I pay I'm paying my mechanic this year like to come mm. with me I don't have anyone um doing that stuff for me like, right right uh so so from an I mean, athlete perspective sure. just just to clarify so like basically you have a pot of money and out of that pot of money you need to get your flights, your food, your accommodation, to everything you've got to do yourself, right? Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. and you've never done any of this before. So it's a full learning curve. Yeah. Um totally. and yeah. So are you like percentage wise, are you pretty much set up for the year or are you still you missing some stuff? Like what's going on? Um pretty set. Like yeah. have everything, like as far as uh everything was a bit of a mad rush to get together for the whole press release. Like that was a thing that was you know, we wanted to do it properly um, to make a bit of a uh, like an impact on the, I guess you could say, on the industry. Yeah, like, yeah. just dude, but that edit like, is lit, so good. Mm, no, I'm still that it turned out. Yeah, um, as well as it did. But yeah, it was kind of like at first when we were, were talking about it, Ollie helped massively with that. So I give him a huge shout out. Like I've never really, uh, I've never, in fact, I've never really, I have never pieced together. Uh, a press release for thought through that process mm. so he like sorted out he got all my contacts from all my sponsors and basically uh, emailed every single one with all the media files and they had access to everything basically cool so it was like forbidden's press release but um, all the sponsors that are supporting me could pick and choose from any of the media the photos, videos that they wanted. Yeah. Um, so everyone got a piece of a piece of that, and like everyone got good exposure. Everyone shared everything, which was super cool as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was just uh, he helped massively with that to get that press release together because there was a moment where we were chatting, and I didn't even have the frame right. So, okay. <laughs> so you'd already signed as well, like you're a forbidden rider, but you couldn't. Yeah. Do oh, because you were oh. riding your buddies. New. New proof for a bit, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, and I was kind of like, Ollie was like, dude, just keep it chill, like don't like give away too much, and it was really difficult for me too because people would ask and I would just say I can't say, right. And it was getting to the point where I was like, oh, I just like want to just tell, like I just want it out there so I can like ride my goddamn bike, you know. But, then, but were people pulling they, you over on the trail as well and they're like, what are you riding next year? Oh, honestly. Like, <laughs> some people are like messaging me on Instagram being like, like, dude, fucking just tell us who you're riding for. Like, it's getting bored. And I was like, it's not up to me. Like, <laughs> my hands are tied. Like, I can't say anything. Uh, but it's like, and then we, we, we were arranging two days to do filming with Tommy yeah. um, and to do photos with Innes. We'd had days booked, then those days it snowed, so we had to push that back. And then, yeah, the, the next again days we uh, we we luckily had it. 
we got two two good days for filming and um yeah yeah the it couldn't honestly it turned out any better i was really stoked with the edit and then um it was just meant to see how many people didn't know about the brand but now for sure they're either like i'm buying one or like i'm thinking about swapping my bike for mm. this mm. it's like it's kind of like uh snowballed pretty pretty heavily for me but then for i think ollie and owen also yeah 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 uh, well to be honest he did say ollie said today that that uh that edit you put out like pretty much sold those guys out of bikes which is insane but yeah. that's you know that um, that's your job as well right like yeah you're out there to get results to promote the brand yeah um so to see that that must be that must be super sick like yeah it's it's definitely cool and then yeah i just think obviously i want to do as good uh, the best i can for those guys for racing yeah. but the the marketing thing and like the youtube thing i'm just trying to press like i'm i'm wanting to like come across as uh being supernatural and i actually really want to show people like the process or what i'm up to like mm -hmm. um do you think as well that as a professional athlete that this stuff is well it is becoming more and more apparent but also you know, now you can't just go out and ride your bike. You've got to be thinking about Instagram, you know, Facebook, YouTube, yeah, yeah. TikTok, if you're yeah. on that stuff as well. Like there's so many yeah. levels to this now. Like, and yeah, that's what, yeah. you know, a brand's going to want that as well. They, mm -hmm. they want to know like, right, what else is he doing? You know? Yeah. Or yeah, there's, a, there's a lot to balance up. Mm, uh, mm. And you have to kind of prioritize it in a way, I guess. But I'm just trying to do a bit of everything at the same time really like um if i'm out training i would sometimes i sometimes quite like to video it like and do it make a youtube video of it like it's uh by no means i'm like freaking massive on youtube but like <laughs> within the past since i started since i signed with forbidden and that news went out yeah and i've put out the last i think the last three videos like they're like 15 15,000 views yeah, and then yeah. my recent ones at like 24 but that and I've only got 5,000 subscribers right that's so it's really like, good yeah it's like gaining traction which is like important mm. for me to see and for people to comment being like oh just come across your channel like this is cool insight like I think people appreciate the fact that I'm not hiding like if I'm struggling with a certain something. Yeah, yeah, And I'm yeah. just like, I, this doesn't feel good, but, like, I'm trying to figure out how to get it to feel better. And then people can, like, relate to that and are like, yeah, I have this difficulty with my suspension, like, and I'm trying this. And I'm like, it's it's cool to see that, like, engagement. Mm. Um, people want more I'm, now, dude. People want so much yeah. more. They want to know more about you. It's not, you know, again, it's, it's what's fueled this podcast growth. Yeah. People don't just want to see a one minute Instagram video. They want to know like, right, what, like, where's this guy from? Like, what does he do? They yeah. actually want to, you know what I mean? They want to know more about you and know like the in-depth stuff. Totally. Um, and I think it seems to have come full circle. It seems to be now where, you know, we had the little, and there's still a market for it, don't get me wrong, but the one minute Instagram bangers or the two minute edit. Mm, but sure. you know, people still want to sit and they want to listen to a whole conversation. Like they want to know about you, like yeah, yeah. what's motivating you, what's, you know, they want to know that sort of stuff. And again, like what difficulties are you facing as an athlete? It's not all mm -hmm. sunshine and rainbows out there. Yeah. As you've just no. proved, like this is not an easy way to make a living at yeah. all. Yeah. I think it's, that's something that I want people to like understand is like, I think people are so quick to, it, it seems, especially with me, I don't know why, but a lot of people, seem to like not target me but like try and like they see me as an easy target so they're quite quick to uh, criticize or okay. something right and I, i'm just kind of like and, and this is not i've had pro riders like message me on instagram mm. like and i just like don't like understand like what their issue is like you don't know me i've never really spoken to, i've never spoken to you like we're not friends like just because you don't like what i post like how does that give you good reason to like either make a post about me or talk shit on me mm -hmm. and i just find that really like 
from the standpoint of like I just want people to like I want to be approachable right so the whole thing with the YouTube is like I'm I'm just like basically giving people an insight to like yeah. what I'm really like like naturally like and yeah I just think people should take note that like I don't look for uh, sympathy like this is super hard work right what I'm doing but I want to do it and I love doing it and I enjoy it but I just think people should have a little bit more sort of respect yeah. in the sense of like could like could you frick, like fucking do this probably like not but you probably could if you like put your mind to it right mm, mm. and I just think yeah I don't know I'm just never the one to kind of like judge people or don't get me wrong there's people uh that like post stuff or I come across people's YouTube videos and I'm like eh, it's not my cup of tea but yeah I just hit the hit the cross button and I don't watch it right yeah yeah but people are like so fast to judge and but you never know what's going on behind closed doors like so this true. is like a lot of stress like yeah who knows something personal could be going on in someone's life and for someone just to like jump on the bandwagon and just like lay into you about nothing because I don't know they don't really have a reason to not like you yeah they're just doing it because they're trolls I think it's like I just think it's pretty shitty so I would just kind of I wouldn't appreciate it but just if people like try and apply that to their life like totally be, just be kind to almost everyone like you, just because you don't like someone doesn't mean you have to um, give them massive amounts of shit you know like yeah. Yeah. It's just um It's just culture as well, dude. It's so easy totally. to do that, man. Like how many people yeah. sit behind their Instagram and send you a shitty message? Oh, yeah. But totally. they probably would never say anything like that to your face, right? No. It's totally. fucked that people yeah. can do that and it's just totally. it's this twenty twenty man, it's what we're in, you know, and totally. and yeah. it, you know, I'm trying to sort of think if I I've personally had like a few things like that where people have said mm. like nasty things about right. about you know this for example like oh mm. production your production's quality is shit i'm like yeah of course it is i don't know what i'm fucking doing yeah. mate like i ain't got a clue <laughs> yeah. but like yeah. you, you but it especially when it's your livelihood as well like for you like this is your job like it's how many people have someone yeah. walk into the factory and say oh you're doing a shit job of making those sandwiches or it, yeah they yeah. don't really totally. get it so yeah it's man i don't know and people yeah, yeah people are jealous too i think being one of the faster guys mm -hmm there's going to be an ounce of jealousy there like you know and seeing you get you know what it's like man you get you get stuff for free like you get paid to do stuff like people are going to, yeah. going to be jealous naturally yeah, it's fucked yeah. that that's the culture we live in but it, you know totally. rather than people yeah. be happy for you and say oh well done mate they'd rather oh, bash yeah. you about it and say why you, oh, you know, yeah. why are you riding that it's crap like yeah yeah because they're no, it's, paying my mortgage <laughs> some no, of the time right yeah it's just um yeah i think it's it's been like so much work but like i said i, I the position I'm in now I'm super happy like it's the best I've ever felt on a bike and I think that's like I'm not just saying that like that's a statement like for mm. for the bike that like Owen has built like and Ollie was telling me a little about Owen today so Owen's like an aero yeah. what did he call it aero aerospace engineer so these people are they're heavy yeah, yeah, man they designed bikes smart. for a lot of other brands as well in the past like I think this yeah. is a gonna be a a pretty proven bike for you to be honest yeah yeah no i think uh yeah like super knowledgeable and then also like ollie's pretty fresh as well to the mm. company and we all know like his marketing skills and like the, the kind of contacts he has and um i think it'll be a really good a really good mix um and the season isn't even started like we're a couple of weeks deep since the announcement and like things are just really kind of happening and going in a good direction so. it must be cool for you as well to start seeing that momentum like you said the youtube even the youtube's starting to get momentum yeah. and people are starting yeah. to take notice of of you again you know yeah. after yeah. after a pretty turbulent year or two yeah um yeah. everything seems to be going like positive it's in the right direction totally. isn't it yeah and i don't think i would be able to honestly the, the the content that i've created i don't think i would be able to do that if i was on a team like there's just something different about being on a team that you're maybe a little bit more restricted to chat about some certain things. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's, I think the forbidden thing too is it's so new. It's something that is 
only been brought to light now really like just the brand itself the bike yeah they're not even a year old i don't think they're it's it's a super (laughs) super small like brand right now but um honestly like i i think that people will really kind of i mean i think people have already kind of understood that just from watching the video or just whatever they're kind of like shit like that bike like never seen it in my life but like clearly like is a really well working bike you yeah, know? yeah 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 uh, yeah and my plan is to just keep having fun show what it's capable of talk about it and just because the chain looks funny like and weird <laughs> doesn't mean it's like a bad like i think people are quite afraid like they're just used to the conventional yeah like, yeah standard chain and people sometimes don't like change um true but i mean yeah it looks unique dude like the high pivot and it does look like a unique bike but i've seen again if people haven't seen it you did a really interesting video on your instagram showing how the Mm -hmm. suspension worked which is basically Mm -hmm. it's going the rear end's going up rather than out so it's yeah yeah, i I don't know man i'm not the guy to talk about technical stuff at all um it's 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 quite a unique now that i have the bike set up like pretty much close to how I, I, I want it now it's like when I ride it it like reduces the feedback you get through your feet right okay so like there's on a conventional bike or chain or whatever when you're riding along your feet are like getting kicked back right but with this like it feels like my feet are just pretty much All right level um, and then in turns when you're compressing the rear end like you can see the rear end like stretches yeah right? yeah 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 and it it's just like i've never cornered a bike before and felt like i've had that much traction before like it's uh it's quite a unique feeling um and i think i i mean it is a trail bike like uh i've rode it on downhill stuff but then i've also rode it on trail center stuff mm. it's only 130 in the rear but if yeah like happily race on it it doesn't matter uh, i think it's what you what you do with the travel not so much like totally agree with you man how many people much, yeah. buy bikes with like you know 160 mil travel and go yeah. riding around basically grass fields in the uk yeah, it's just like totally. so many people are over biked yeah yeah you know and look at some of the fastest guy keegan wright rides like 130 mm. i think 120 130 yeah, or something yeah. right. it's crazy yeah yeah i just think it's and that's kind of my i mean i had a couple of people that have came up to me yesterday some guy uh well not some guy i actually know who he is but not that well he came into the cafe and he was like can i can i talk to you for a second i was like sure and he was like so i've been riding intense basically like i think he, I'm sure he's always been on intense but he was like i'm looking for a change i don't want something that's got massive travel mm. but the bike that you're on looks like it can kind of do it all but you know it's primarily a, a trail bike right so i chatted through uh, chatted about it with him and um, he was like, I've never heard of them until you jumped on the bike, never seen the bike, but I'm like, it's well appealing to me. So it's kind of like bringing, like just introducing it to yeah. people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, You're a brand ambassador as well as a sponsored yeah, athlete, right? Basically. Like, yeah. And I think it deserves, it totally deserves their, like a lot of recognition. Mm. Um, but it, it, whether it takes like months or whatever, like, for it to, to gain that recognition like um it will at some point yeah i think it is already but um yeah i'm, I'm just i think a lot of people's questions are um kind of being answered like slowly but it's just uh mm-hmm. the main thing is to get racing on it and then get more people talking about it yeah. i guess after that yeah um so what are the what are the goals like for 2020 then i mean i've noticed you're missing the first couple of rounds just to yeah, get set up and or mad expensive yeah dude. Like, yeah i just feel like the amount i have together for the budget is like a big already and um honestly the amount that i have i couldn't really get any more because i was already late and mm. uh the brands that are uh paying me are like I, like i said for how late it is i massively appreciate them chipping in like for that budget um so yeah just kind of was like i'll miss the first two they're a big cut like i don't really know how much they would be uh, i want to say like close to like eight grand nine grand maybe yeah 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 for for the for the two yeah and i'm just kind of like for two rounds like really like 
so I have other plans to do stuff at home like I'm racing at the end of this month at the British Enduro okay. series or something in Glentress so that's round one so I'll do that and then you know um, just sorry I've got a quick question right. so you know if if you went out to those rounds uh, South Africa I think isn't it first one is it uh, uh, Chile and then Colombia oh sorry yeah Chile Colombia um, you know you spend all that money what like <laughs> What do you expect back, if that makes sense? Like, what's the prize money is not going to cover that. No. Nowhere near, not. right? So no. you're just doing it no. for exposure, pretty much. Exposure, you would know. I don't know. I, I, don't even think <laughs> if you, I don't even think if you won the EWS, like the, the round itself, I don't even know if, because I don't have any bonuses, right? Right. But say last year, if I was on that bonus program that I was on this year, if I won the round, I would, wouldn't even blooming make, I don't know, four grand right. like back. Like it, it doesn't, you're going over there, yes, for a result and whatever, yeah. but, and to race for your team, like you said, exposure, but it's a big spend. It is a big spend, especially when nothing's going to come back, you know. Yeah. And it's always like, you know, it's experience and all that, but it's kind of like, like that amount of money is a lot yeah it is I remember when we did that whole episode me you and Rich and he was talking about some of the money you were spending I mean it was yeah. astronomical amounts of money dude like he budgeted I think 50 I think it was like 15,000 pounds that year for travel I was like yeah. fuck yeah. dude like and he yeah. was a full privateer I mean he yeah. got a free yeah. bike that's pretty much the yeah. extent of Rich like mm. he just yeah. got a free bike to use and then someone stole it anyway so but um it's, it's, it's a lot of money. I mean, yeah. yeah, don't get me wrong, it's great fun and stuff, but if you're looking at it as totally. a business, like, you, you know, you'd never do that. No, no, no. So. Totally. It's, it's a, yeah, so I was just kind of like, it, and it, usually I think it would have bothered me, like, oh, I have to go, got to go, but I was like, you know what, nah, like, hmm. I'd rather, like, I have, again, like, I, I'm planning on doing the race at the end of this month and then uh, have some video ideas and stuff to do. So, I'm happy to do that stuff, and I, I think it'll benefit me. So, and and the com- and the brands also, but yeah. Um, and then yeah, just get ready for for France, which is round three, and that'll be my first. Okay, that'll be your first one. Back. Yeah. Sick. Um, so it kind of like usually I'm getting ready now, like training, like kind of coming down. Yeah. For for the end of this month, but now I'm like. I don't have to be ready really till the end of May right. and I, I don't mean that in like a, I'm just going to sit back and chill but it's like you know I am a racer but then I also have other things to do like I want to create some content and like yeah, make some videos mm. people love it so are you um, doing more with the brands as well so you've got you know sponsors for this year are you doing more yeah, with them as far as like product development and stuff like that yeah doing a bit of uh, yeah running some prototype stuff at the moment and just kind of feeling that out um and then also just trying to do a bit more marketing stuff like some more photos for Mm -hmm. adverts and magazines and yeah all that sort of websites so just trying to do that really um trying to wear yeah just trying to take on different things Mm -hmm. uh at the same time without kind of being too busy but um that was all part of my plan was to um have racing as my focus but um like the like the youtube thing has happened naturally and i actually really i actually really enjoy like taking like sometimes i'll just use my iphone and yeah. i'll just fit like film a group ride day like and it's sick fun yeah it's cool and uh it's not like i'm trying to like chase a certain amount of subscribers or anything like that i just it's something different mm. like so i enjoy editing my videos like i'm like something new and um something you can probably use in later like, life as well that's the thing isn't it you're like building a skill set as well totally. yeah yeah and i think over the course of the year it'll grow and grow and grow like i'm not earning cr- like that m- much of amount on youtube but like the past couple of weeks i've paid nothing to make a video yeah and i'm making money back on it so i'm like it doesn't doesn't matter like if i'm having fun doing it and i'm getting a little bit a little bit of something back mm. as well as people kind of 
enjoying the videos, which is the main thing. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm just going to keep doing it. Dude, some so, of those mountain bike channels are popping too. Like, yeah, dude, some of those channels. I can imagine channels. Like, the amount that, that they make like is really good. Yeah. And I hope that it can get to that stage at one point. Like, um, I so think, like you said, as long as like, you're not chasing it too hard and like you're keeping yeah. it fun, organic, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's that's the important thing because I think, especially as someone who again like creates content myself, you can spot it when it's fake straight away. Like you know, like this is yeah. just literally an advert, or it's like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, just yeah. keeping it fun and coming up with cool yeah. shit. I don't know how you come up yeah. with keep coming up with stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I was talking about that the other day. I'm like, there's gonna be a because I'm trying to stick to two uploads a week. Wow. Okay. Same, same, same days, same times, and I've done that for a little bit now. And it actually, because people kind of expect the video to be up there and there. Yeah. And uh, luckily, I've got a lot going on at the moment, so it's like going to be able to I'm going to be able to talk about stuff but um, to begin with I did wonder like how, like what am I going to talk about but <laughs> the whole like forbidden and all these brands and me doing my own thing gives me a lot to talk about whereas if I was on a team mm. ugh, that's uh, there's not much to talk about really right like, right I, I don't think teams are that much of a that much of a fan of me like would maybe be much of a fan of me getting my camera out at a test day and True. documenting it yeah whereas with so, this you, you can and it's, it's going to help as well yeah totally. uh, i was curious i wonder if like yeah. certain brands are pushing more athletes into doing like vlogs and stuff because there must be something yeah. going on with red bull dude like what red bull athlete doesn't have a vlog they're pretty much all on it i don't know if it's just coincidence yeah. or what but I'm, it's got to be you know, huge yeah. value in that. You look at like the, the the views that like Matt Jones is getting, for example, or yeah. you know, it's, Matt, yeah. it's huge, yeah. dude. Like that's big, yeah. big numbers, like huge, yeah. huge yeah. numbers. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think, and I think that's like, I mean, it's just the a, a different like platform, right? Mm. Like, yeah, I've only really ever used Instagram, but since I've started using YouTube, I'm like, shit, like it's a way better way to like be real and communicate with people and you know and 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 you can give your brands like good coverage too yeah. but i think it's like sticking with it i think you have to stick with it like yes you're going to start with no subscribers yes your views are going to be super shit yeah and no one's going to take notice but if you stick at it enough people will start being like oh he's not just uploading once every three months you know yeah you've got and to I be consistent I remember, watch, I remember watching matt stuff when he was like starting mm. and now he's like freaking hundreds and hundreds of thousands <laughs> it's insane of yeah it's like and all he's doing is like showing dirt jump sessions or building his backyard or yeah something like that the like, shit he'd be doing anyway yeah, that's the thing so, you're not like doing anything out of the ordinary if anything it inspires no. you to do more probably i know i i yeah. did a couple long time ago um but it almost made me think like right what can i do today shit that maybe you wouldn't have done you'd be like oh, i can't really be bothered yeah. i don't want to go for a ride yeah. whereas now you know with that yeah. you're like no i'm gonna like i want it i've got to go do it as yeah. well yeah yeah so. yeah uh, it's just um yeah and i felt like a couple of years ago if i was doing this i would have really only showed the parts that i thought looked cool or 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 fast or like what i thought people would want to see mm. Whereas now I'm just like, I'm just going to like show whatever. Like, I mean, I have a video coming out on Thursday and like, I'm trying a couple things on the bike and I think people will question it or be like, kind of like, Hmm, like that's weird. But I don't want to just like be like, look, I've got this mint bike, all these mint parts, like check out how bling they are. Like, yeah, it works instantly. <laughs> I'm not really like, um, one thing I'm not doing on my channel on the channel is pro like, product reviews like i'm not gonna try and like in your face sell mm. something to you i just want to like show what the bike's capable of talk about it in like a natural way yeah yeah uh, so yeah just it's cool man keep, 
keep going ahead with that. But um, I'm stoked for you. Def- I'm glad things just yeah. have worked out. You know, turned a shit situation into something really exciting. Yeah. And unique. Totally. It could yeah. have went either way. Like, <laughs> yeah. It was. It was to the point where I was like, hmm, maybe I have to move back home. Like it was just like that. Mm. It was just kind of. Um, yeah. Like initial first like panic, you know. Well, you. I but, mean, uh, basically, dude, you're unemployed. That's the reality of it, isn't it? You were unemployed. Like you yeah. lost your job. Like anyone else losing a job, whether it's in a steel factory or anything, it's the same thing. Yeah, so, so you got to go out and get it. Like if you want it bad enough. Yeah. And that's kind of what I have. What I have to say to people that either criticize me or are quick to judge. Like, I don't like looking down. Like I don't like to hate on people. But like, what are you doing? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck I think. You yeah. might have touched on this a little bit too, but I'm curious, like, what, what actually is motivating you? You know, you're in Scotland. It's pissing it down with rain yeah. 99.9% <laughs> of the time. You know, it's been fucking hard work. So what is it? What is the motivation? Honestly, just, I guess it's like going back to when I went from downhill to enduro. Like, it was this new, it was something that I enjoyed. Like, it was a new motivation, right, going to enduro. Yeah. So with this, it's like, have all these brands that are like yes they're investing a little bit of money to me and all that which um if i don't do my job then you know people aren't going to be like happy or satisfied right but yeah i'm probably having the most fun even though it's been stressful i'm probably having the most fun i've i've had since i started racing in enduro really like it's just the fact that i'm in the gear that i feel good in that I went out and I got all this so it's kind of like it's just rewarding and for Mm. me to go out and kind of not to kind of show people like look what I did but it's kind of like look I didn't think I could do this but I did and now I have this thing together and it's just kind of like if anyone asks me like how it happened or I'll just sit with that person and I'll tell them the full story basically what I've told you and I think it gives kind of people some sort of hope and a little bit of motivation that there are different ways to make a living and to do this like or to do what you enjoy doing yeah like you don't have to be on a team Mm. like you don't and that's what i always thought you had had to do to make a living it's like you have to be on a factory team yeah but now this is like open so many more opportunities i've made like really good friendships already like we're only in march and all the brands that I'm in touch with and the people that are helping me, like we're just, we get on super well. Yeah. You know? It's just, it's not, I wouldn't even say there's like a massive motivation. Like I'm not looking for an EWS title, but I believe that I can get on the podium. But I think that's going to be something that if I just put my head down, keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully that will come at some point. Yeah. But, yeah. Dude, I reckon I for sure. It. I think I think uh, with this fire in your in your belly and like you know, like yeah. you said, feeling yeah. comfortable and and whatever. I think I'll throw it out there, dude. I reckon a podium could be on the cards. To be fair, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's like let's not jinx it. I don't really have <laughs> I don't really have any uh, results in mind. I haven't thought about results all off season. Honestly, cool. it's just I think if I just put my best foot forward and ride the best I can. And I have, and all the kind of stars align, like bikes up, yeah. happy. That's sometimes all it takes, and and you ride, how, you race how you know you can. Um, it's a bit into the future, but there is now. There's the EWS coming to Analita next year. Okay. That is next year, but that's a big kind of aim, like a future aim of mine. Okay, you could say like, I definitely think. I can. That's my best shot at winning one. I think. Right, sure. you must know that place like so, like fucking the underside of your nutsack up there, dude. Like yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've never never raced the EWS at, like here before, so it's kind of like I have that. In, I actually have that in the back of my head too. It's just kind of like, you know, have a really good year this year, but next year, like, it's definitely on my uh, in my head that that's going to be the best chance I ever have to kind of win one. Mm. Is it my like I just walk out my front door and I'm right dead center in the middle of the middle of Annalita and, and yeah, a minute away from the trails. Yeah. So um 
obviously that's yeah, got its good points. Awesome. Is there any negatives to that though? Just been so like. I don't think so. No. I, I think people could think it would add like a lot of pressure, but it's kind of like I've I've rode here since I was twelve years old, so nothing is like new to me. Like, and I think as soon as you start putting pressure on yourself, like what, like. I understand, like, say for, like, Supercross guys, like, to put pressure on themselves because they're racing for millions of dollars. But for me, it's more just motivating. Like, I would love to... I would love... I've always... A dream of mine is to win an EWS. Yeah. And I'm like, shit, yeah. What better an opportunity than to have it literally on the trails that I've been racing since I was 11 years old. Mm. Like, it's just... Uh, people, like, know how to channel like i guess pressure in a negative way sometimes but then in a positive way yeah and i see it as a positive like i think a lot plays in my favor mm. and i know this is like march next year or whatever but i think it's cool to have that in the back of you back in my head like, yeah especially as you, like you said you're trying to like almost build a foundation this year of like right yeah. you know figure the bike out exactly. no doubt you're gonna maybe even do a bike swap something new yeah. i don't know like something's gonna yeah. happen right different you yeah. know spec and stuff like that and then next year, it's like, right, if we can yeah. get, get into like, it. Like a, like a building block, like a stepping stone this year, but it, more in the sense of, like, see how the program runs, and then if all goes to plan and everyone's stoked, then why wouldn't I do it next year? Mm. And then we're, I'm even, then we're all even more prepared, and then, you know, we mm. can kind of start going after, like, results. But this year, like, if I'm inside the top 10 or top 20 – Dude, I'd be so flipping over the moon with that. Like, yeah. And I, yeah, I think uh, just to bring bring the bike to the WS is just kind of a win in itself for for those guys. Definitely, as well. definitely, man. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, dude. Do you know a couple of listener questions if you want, and then we'll uh, sure. wrap her up. I think we've already covered most of these. Um, yeah. JH Matlock just wanted to know uh, more about like the spec. <sighs> of the mm. the druid i love that bike name by the way the druid it's fucking awesome <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah spec dude like what what are you running um yeah i mean i don't have to list all my sponsors again <laughs> <laughs> uh just like uh, sorry i can charge I mean, them again <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a lot of uh everything on the bike is almost brand new like as a new product to me other than max's tires and fox suspension okay Everything else is like new, so like E13 wheels, Renthal, TRP, which is a pretty like pretty cool brand to be working with. Mm-hmm. Um, like I actually get to email back and forth with feedback and everything with them. Um, so yeah, I'm at, and then yeah, SDG with their saddle and their seat post, which they're trying to really push this year. So okay, just trying to. Uh, I feel like I've got a bloody rad build together, so I'm like really stoked with it um so yeah just a pretty damn sweet build sick um Um, let me just look hang on you sent me one what did you send me um did you direct message it i think oh yeah you did mm. oh yeah again we've covered it man we've gone through almost everything with this i think we've uh not left many stones unturned with this episode. <laughs> I like it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you got anything else that jumps out over there? We got a uh, bikes and spanners, uh, flaps or no flaps. I'm sure that's an inside joke, but yeah, I'm not answering that. I can almost, uh, yeah, I think I know what that means. <laughs> I can't believe you sent that. Oh, dear. Oh. Yeah, that, so that bike and, bike and spanner, Lewis, they're like a shop in Edinburgh. Yeah. And uh, they've just kind of, sat, I don't know, signed or like to be a demo or dealer or something for Forbidden. Oh, perfect. Like in, in kind of Scotland or in this area. So <laughs> That's um, cool. So people out there listening, no doubt, if you want to go ride yeah. one of these bikes, hit up uh, yeah. Bikes and Spanner. Yeah, uh, yeah. And also, so. obviously, uh, what they call uh, Bike Tracks and Ampleside, they're a dealer. Yeah. I think Ollie said today, they got like 12 European dealers in in uh sorry 12 dealers in europe so there's quite a few more oh, wow. i think sandy down at the trailhead potentially yeah, is yeah. a dealer as well so um but yeah the website's really good as well anyone wanting more info on that bike uh forbiddenbikeco.com i believe it is yeah and their instagram's good in fact if you want a f- 
a full rundown of your spec. Forbidden just did a post, I think it was mm. yesterday. Yeah. Detailed yeah. everything you were running, so that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, check those guys out. Forbidden Bike Co. Uh, on Instagram. But yeah, yeah dude, yeah, I think yeah. uh, pretty much good to catch yeah, up. Not much else to not much else to really cover, I think. No man. Um, yeah, I was kind of yeah. I mean, I just like I said, I wanted it to be natural and like just kind of say it how it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes you're like put in situations like what I was put in, like kind of unfortunate, like. You know what's cool as well, dude? Like, from my point of view here is that, you know, th this whole platform is becoming more of a legit thing for people to come and talk about shit. You know, mm. I remember, well, you know, Brooke McDonald came on and wanted to talk yeah. about, you know, the UCI, basically, and, like, how, mm -hmm. you, you know, how that situation was mishandled. And, sure. you know, the fact that you'll sit here and be honest, I think is really cool. I want to, you know, say thank you for that because, you know, this thing okay. started off and people... In fact, Ollie said it today, you know, you're constantly like, oh, I don't want to upset people in the industry. I don't, oh, I don't want to, but it's like, no, yeah. let's just talk about it, man. Let's just say how it is. Mm -hmm. This is, this is what's mm -hmm. going down. Yeah, yeah. All right. There's two sides of it, but no doubt, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, okay. you know, I think it, I want to say thank you for that, man, just for being honest and open about everything. Um, sure. And again, thanks for doing the podcast, dude. It'd be good to catch up. Let's catch up again in a few months and see how, you know, things are going and, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe try and do so, a few episodes this year and keep catching up and see how you're getting yeah. on with the bike. I know I'm gonna get one of these bikes pretty soon as well, actually, to ride for a bit. Apparently, um, so yeah, I'll be able to ride one. Let's go. We could film something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We can yeah, do something. Yeah. No, I'm totally down for that. Uh, like I said, I think there'll be way more to kind of talk about. And now that I'm, I don't know, I wouldn't say like I've had my hands freaking tied behind my back for the past four years but mm. or on lockdown but i feel like i'm way more of a an open book now like i just want to talk about how it is and like yeah people ask me an opinion on something i'm kind of gonna just say it how it is and you know you don't have to if you don't like me i don't care like you don't really know me it's yeah let me hit you with a question then before we wrap this bad boy up go for it you know professional athlete looking at yeah. the uws series what is it like being an athlete? Is it is it in a good place? Is it sustainable? I don't know. Like where you at? Um, I definitely think it's sustainable, but it's 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 almost not at the same time. It's, I mean, just like we spoke about. Like one minute you can be like talking about women signing with the team for another two years, and then the next minute you don't have absolutely anything. Mm. I think there's not enough uh, there. I don't know whether it's like there's not enough money or whatever, but it doesn't seem like there's enough teams out there to yeah. like. There's a lot of good racers out there. Yeah. Um, that don't that actually dig into their own pockets. Mm. Um, but then it's kind of like you're if you want it bad enough, you'll go out and you'll just be like, you know, you just go out and you'll get you'll get it really right. Yeah. For me, it was like, it doesn't matter what it takes. Like, I'm just going to go out and do it. But it's, I definitely, like you said, it's great being able to do this as a job, but it isn't what everyone thinks. Yeah. A lot of people say, oh, dude, like, come on. Like, you ride a bike for a living. Like, I'm like, mm, yeah, but you don't see what like goes on throughout the week, not from the training standpoint, but from everything else. Yeah. So uh, we are, everyone's, we're just all like human, right? Mm -hmm. So whether or not you're like someone who works uh, Monday to Friday, like nine to five, and then gets out one day on the weekend, uh, like I'm pretty much the same as you, just a different, yeah, a different kind. Of yeah, like today you're like, oh yeah, I'm off on Tuesday, let's record on Tuesday. Yeah. So you take like a normal I'm day off. Just, <laughs> just a, a different, I'm just a different like speed of rider and a different, different capabilities right but we're still riding a bike and yeah i just think it's that's kind of my aim is to kind of show people that just a normal kind of person right yeah just going through kind of struggles but like different to other people of course like everyone has different stuff but um i, I definitely enjoy the job i do it is tough and you can't lay up and you have to <coughs> be very, you have to be very aware of um, like your surroundings and hmm. 
yeah, I yeah. think uh, I'm definitely more switched on now than I was last, even last year. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah. Just, just with, you know, like we say, negotiations. Like, there, I guarantee you this year they'll be happening June, even earlier. Like, yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely insane. You know, new bikes yeah. start coming out around then. You see a 2021 right. bike, no problem. Around like yeah. end of yeah. June, July, it's crazy. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> things are just like everyone just races to get things done earlier and earlier and earlier it's been happening for years no doubt but yeah 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 Yeah. you know um but but no it's definitely good good i enjoy it but just trying to take a little bit of a different approach to it right yeah Um, well i'm excited dude i'm looking forward to watching the season unfold keep you know keep watching the youtube obviously it's lewis buchanan on youtube um yeah instagram instagram's pumping as usual good following Mm -hmm. over there uh try lewis buchanan and uh yeah dude thanks again appreciate you no thanks you i appreciate having the as usual having the platform to good talk about it like you said i honestly is i think you can't really talk about it anywhere like you can't do it on instagram hell no, but like, <laughs> maybe you should do some like long form youtube videos too did you see oh yeah. fuck dude did you see mark do you follow mark webb no, but I've watched the stuff. Yeah, well, he's uh, his his latest one's different to watch. He's basically gone through like Is a it really like a talk show or something. He's gone through no, he's gone through like a really rough breakup with his girl. Oh shit! And he just sits and talks about it for like fifty minutes. I got like twenty minutes through, and I was like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna cry. I've got to stop watching this. <laughs> like it's gnarly. Oh, yeah. yeah, that takes that takes balls. He just sat there in front like of the that. camera, dude, and just went for it. Just told the whole story. But I've been following his Instagram for a while, and like seen yeah. some weird stuff like oh this it almost looks like he's you know something's going on mental you know mentally mm, something's like going on yeah. yeah and then he's yeah. just sat and talked about it and i've i've said wow. to him, i'm gonna get into that video maybe watch it later today but yeah i think something like that not saying yeah. you know open yourself totally. up like that but like just longer form of telling people like what's going on i think it's, yeah. it's it can only be a good thing and, and anytime yeah. you want to jump on here and chat dude like obviously you're more than welcome so yeah. No, we'll sort something out cool. for middle of the year or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. For sure. we'll catch up somewhere as well. Yeah, sounds good. Sweet. All right, dude. Have a good day, man. God bless. Stay there. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Episode number 96 in the bag. I apologize for a little bit of distortion on Lewis's headphones. I genuinely thought it was my headphones when we were recording. So hence why I didn't really... Uh, try and make a change my headphones have been playing up a little bit so yeah apologies for that hopefully you guys have made it through 96 episodes still learning you know what i mean hopefully by the time we hit 196 uh, this thing will be dialed uh, who knows um thanks once again everybody for listening again uh please support the sponsors um muck off www.muckoff.com enter the promo code hkt15 gets you 15 percent off natural leaf cbd HKT Pod 10 gets you 10% off over there. Sacks underwear, if you're not wearing sacks, you're slipping. And don't forget to uh, drop us a follow too. It's at the Hook It Podcast on anything and everything. Uh, and of course, hookitproducts.co.uk. If you need some parts for your bike, one stop shop right there, HKT uh, hktproducts.co.uk. All right, guys, we'll catch you soon. Episode 97 coming in hot. Peace. <laughs>